Hey Space fans, welcome like back to the Science Hub, where your daily dose of all things cosmic. And today, we're diving deep into a topic that's been generating a lot of buzz. The International Space Station, or ISS. And it's planned to orbit in 2031. Show you now, how I know works. you've shared some articles, which means you're already pretty curious about how and why we're saying goodbye to this iconic piece of space history. It is fascinating, isn't it? This incredible structure has been orbiting our planet for over three decades, continuously inhabited since 2000. Think about that. An entire generation has only known a world with humans living in space. It's amazing when you put it in those terms, isn't it? A whole generation for whom humans in space is just normal. It really highlights the scale of what the ISS represents. But I'm sensing from your research that there's more to this story than just a fond farewell. Absolutely. While the ISS has been a symbol of international collaboration and scientific achievement, it's also showing its age. We're talking cracks in modules, air leaks, and a whole host of systems operating well beyond their intended lifespan. There's even been talk of certain sections essentially reaching their expiry date. An expiry date? Is yeah. that actually a thing in space? I mean, mm -hmm. it's not like it's going to go moldy, right? Well, not exactly moldy, but you get the idea. In the harsh environment of space, even the most robust materials degrade over time. And when you're dealing with a structure as complex as the ISS, hurtling around Earth at thousands of miles per hour, even small issues can have huge consequences. That makes sense. It's not like you can just call a repair person when something goes wrong up there. Yeah. But wouldn't it be easier and cheaper to just leave it up there? What's the worst that could happen? That's a good question, and one that has definitely been considered. But the reality is, leaving the ISS to its own fate could create some pretty serious problems. One major concern is what's known as Kessler syndrome, essentially a chain reaction of collisions in space. Oh yeah, I've heard of that. It's like a domino effect, right? Yeah. One piece of space junk hits another, creating even more debris, which leads to even more collisions. Exactly. And eventually, all that debris could make low Earth orbit the zone where the ISS resides. Incredibly dangerous and potentially unusable. This area is crucial for so many things we rely on here on Earth, from satellites and communication systems to even things like weather forecasting. So basically letting the ISS become space junk would be a disaster for all our existing space infrastructure. Pretty much. And even if we ignore the whole Kessler syndrome issue, there's another problem with just leaving the ISS up there. Atmospheric drag. Atmospheric drag. Oh. But isn't space supposed to be a vacuum? Well, it's not a perfect vacuum, especially at the altitude where the ISS orbits. There are still trace amounts of atmosphere present. And over time, this creates a tiny amount of drag that gradually slows the station down. So it's like the ISS is constantly being pulled back towards Earth, mm -hmm. even if it's just a little bit. Exactly. And without regular boosts from its thrusters, the station would eventually re-enter the atmosphere on its own. And that's where things can get really dangerous. Right. I'm remembering that incident earlier this year where a piece of space debris, I think it was from a pallet of used batteries, yeah. crashed through the roof of a house in Florida. That's exactly what we want to avoid. And remember, that was just a small piece of debris. Now imagine what could happen if a 400-ton structure like the ISS came crashing down uncontrolled. It would be like playing a real-life game of dodge the debris on a global scale and no one wants to play that game. Yeah, that's a game I definitely prefer to sit out. Yeah. So if leaving the ISS up there isn't an option and letting it fall back to Earth is way too risky, right. what's the plan? Well, they've chosen a controlled deorbit, aiming for a specific location in the Pacific Ocean, Point Nemo. Point Nemo. What's special about that spot? It's the furthest point from any landmass on Earth. Okay. And it's already earned itself a rather interesting nickname, the Spacecraft Cemetery. A Spacecraft Cemetery. Why does it not surprise me? It's sort of perfect though, right? Out of sight, out of mind. In a way, yes. It minimizes the risk of debris impacting populated areas. Plus, Point Nemo is already home to hundreds of decommissioned spacecraft, including the Mir space station. So the ISS will be in good company, so to speak. So it's like a giant underwater museum of space exploration history. It's actually pretty cool, if you don't mind the whole graveyard vibe. But how do they actually plan to steer this massive structure to such a specific location? They'll be relying on a carefully choreographed deorbit plan, similar to what they used for Mir back in 2001. The first step is to gradually lower the ISS's orbit using a series of engine burns. Okay, so they're going to use the station's own engines to bring it down. Isn't that going to take a lot of fuel? It would, which is why they're bringing in some outside help. NASA has awarded a contract to SpaceX to assist with the deorbit, and it's going to cost a cool Billion dollars. Billion dollars. Wow, they're not messing around. What exactly will SpaceX be doing? 
Essentially, they'll be attaching a tug to the ISS and using it to pull the station down into the atmosphere. Think of it like a cosmic tow truck, guiding the ISS to its final resting place. That is a pretty amazing visual. A SpaceX hug slowly pulling this gigantic space station down towards Earth. But honestly, with all the complexity involved, I can't help but wonder, what could possibly go wrong? Well, that's where things get even more interesting. You see, deorbiting the ISS isn't as simple as just pointing it at the right direction and letting gravity do the rest. There are a lot of factors that could complicate the process, starting with the unpredictability of the atmosphere itself. Okay, I'm intrigued. What makes the atmosphere so unpredictable? Especially when we're talking about something as meticulously planned as this. Well, the density of the atmosphere at that altitude can fluctuate significantly due to things like solar activity. Imagine trying to land a plane on a runway that's constantly moving and changing shape. That's kind of what they're up against. So they'll have to adjust the deorbit plan on the fly based on real-time atmospheric conditions. Exactly. It requires a high degree of precision and adaptability. And there's always a chance that something unexpected could happen. Makes you realize just how complex this whole endeavor is. Are there other concerns aside from just getting the trajectory right? Absolutely. There are also environmental considerations. While most of the ISS is expected to burn up during re-entry, some debris, potentially containing hazardous materials, could reach the ocean. You know, based on what you shared about my interest in sustainability, <laughs> this part really stood out to yeah. me. It makes you think about the long-term impact of our space endeavors, doesn't it? It definitely raises some important questions about responsible space exploration, and then there are the legal complexities to consider. Legal complexities? What do you mean? Well, dumping a massive space station into the ocean isn't exactly a common occurrence. There are international laws governing the use of international waters, and it's not entirely clear how they apply to a situation like this. For example, there's the new Global Ocean Treaty, which aims to protect international waters from human activity. But it's not yet fully ratified, so its implications for the ISS deorbit are uncertain. So even though this is happening way out in the middle of the ocean, there are still legal hurdles to clear. Exactly. It highlights the fact that even something as seemingly straightforward as bringing down a space station is tangled up in a web of international agreements and regulations. It seems like saying goodbye to the ISS is a lot more complicated than I initially thought. But even with all these challenges, it sounds like the deorbit is going to be a pretty incredible spectacle at least for those lucky enough to see it. Oh, absolutely. Imagine witnessing this massive structure streaking across the sky, a fiery farewell visible from Earth. It'll be a moment that captures the world's attention, a bittersweet reminder of this incredible chapter in human history. It really does make you think about the ISS's legacy, doesn't it? It's not just a piece of hardware. It's a symbol of human ingenuity, international collaboration, and the pursuit of scientific discovery. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> the ISS has paved the way for countless scientific breakthroughs, technological advancements, and it's given us a permanent foothold in space. And speaking of footholds, you know, one of the things that stood out to me in your notes was your interest in the future of space exploration. So what happens after the ISS? What's next for humans in space? That's where things get really exciting. While the ISS may be coming to an end, it's certainly not the end of human spaceflight. In fact, you could argue that we're entering a whole new era, one with even greater possibilities. Okay, now you've got my attention. Okay. What kind of possibilities are we talking about? For starters, we're already seeing the rise of new space stations. The Chinese Tiangong station is currently operational, marking a major step forward for their space program. And then there's the emergence of commercial space stations. Commercial space stations. Hmm. So private companies are getting in on the space station game now. Exactly. Companies like Axiom, Orbital Reef, and Starlab are all developing their own platforms, each with its own unique focus. These stations are looking beyond purely scientific research, exploring possibilities for space tourism, in space manufacturing, and even movie studios. Wait, movie studios in space? Are you serious? Absolutely. Imagine filming a movie with actual zero gravity effects, no special effects needed. It sounds like science fiction, but it could soon be a reality. That's mind blowing. Yeah. So instead of just a handful of government astronauts, we could see everyday people living, working, and even making movies in space. It's becoming increasingly likely. And of course, let's not forget NASA's ambitious Lunar Gateway project, which will be a space station in orbit around the moon. Ah, yes, the Lunar Gateway. I read some fascinating things about that. Isn't it meant to be a sort of stepping stone for future lunar missions? Precisely. 
It'll be a crucial hub for future lunar exploration, allowing astronauts to control robots on the surface in real time, conduct scientific research, and potentially even serve as a launch pad for missions to Mars. So the end of the ISS isn't the end of human spaceflight, but rather the beginning of a whole new chapter, with potentially even more ambitious goals. I think that's a great way to look at it. The ISS has shown us what's possible when we push the boundaries of human ingenuity and work together towards a common goal. And even though it's sad to see it go, its legacy will live on in all these future endeavors. It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? We're not just saying goodbye to a structure, but acknowledging the end of an era. But at the same time, there's a feeling of excitement for what the future holds. Exactly. And who knows? Maybe one day some of us watching this video might even get the chance to visit one of these future space stations yep. or even set foot on the lunar surface, all thanks to the groundwork laid by the ISS. OK, now you're really getting me excited about the future of space travel. It's amazing to think that something like the ISS, which once seems so futuristic, could one day be just a stepping stone to even greater achievements. That's the beauty of exploration, isn't it? There's always something new to discover, always another horizon to reach for. And even though the ISS is coming down, it's almost like a symbolic passing of the torch to these new ventures. I love that analogy. Yeah. It's a reminder that progress is a continuous journey and that each accomplishment builds upon the ones that came before. And that's a perfect note to wrap up this deep dive on the ISS and its grand finale. It's been a fascinating journey, exploring the hows and whys of its deorbit, the challenges, the risks, and the incredible legacy it leaves behind. It really has been an eye-opening conversation. And for those of you watching, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you excited about the future of space exploration? What are your hopes and dreams for what humanity might achieve beyond Earth? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, if you want to stay up to date on all the latest space news and discoveries, don't forget to subscribe to the Science Hub for more daily space content. Until next time, keep looking up. It's not just a piece of hardware. It's a symbol of human ingenuity, international collaboration, and the pursuit of scientific discovery. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> the ISS has paved the way for countless scientific breakthroughs, technological advancements, and it's given us a permanent foothold in space. And speaking of footholds, you know, one of the things that stood out to me in your notes was your interest in the future of space exploration. So what happens after the ISS? What's next for humans in space? That's where things get really exciting. While the ISS may be coming to an end, it's certainly not the end of human spaceflight. In fact, you could argue that we're entering a whole new era, one with even greater possibilities. Okay, now you've got my attention. Okay. What kind of possibilities are we talking about? For starters, we're already seeing the rise of new space stations. The Chinese Tiangong station is currently operational, marking a major step forward for their space program. And then there's the emergence of commercial space stations commercial space stations. Mm. So private companies are getting in on the space station game now. Exactly. Companies like Axiom, Orbital Reef, and Starlab are all developing their own platforms, each with its own unique focus. These stations are looking beyond purely scientific research, exploring possibilities for space tourism, in space manufacturing, and even movie studios. Wait, movie studios in space? Are you serious? Absolutely. Imagine filming a movie with actual zero gravity effects, no special effects needed. It sounds like science fiction, but it could soon be a reality. That's mind blowing. Yeah. So instead of just a handful of government astronauts, we could see everyday people living, working, and even making movies in space. It's becoming increasingly likely. And of course, let's not forget NASA's ambitious Lunar Gateway project, which will be a space station in orbit around the moon. Ah, yes, the Lunar Gateway. I read some fascinating things about that. Isn't it meant to be a sort of stepping stone for future lunar missions? Precisely. It'll be a crucial hub for future lunar exploration.